Welcome back guys. Now, let's continue with some other esophageal disorders. The esophageal disorder which I want to discuss here is called as a mallory. Vis tears. So, what exactly are this mallory vis tears? For example, imagine I am an alcoholic. Okay, I am doing the binge drinking. After that binge drinking, okay, now I am having the vomiting. What happens? So, whatever the food particles I have eaten, okay, now I am drinking, drinking. Usually, alcoholics will have this uh, problem of vomiting, right? So, while he is vomiting, what might happen is there will be a laceration, so longitudinal lacerations, which will happen in the esophagus, especially in the lower one third of the esophagus. Okay, you can very clearly see here. See, these are the longitudinal lacerations that are happening in the lower part of the esophagus. Seen in which people, this mallory vest tears, these are the longitudinal tears. Okay, first, number one point is these are longitudinal tears. Seen where? Seen in the lower one third of the esophagus, mainly in the gastroesophageal junction. Okay, gastroesophageal junction. Seen in which individuals? Mainly in the alcoholics. Okay, forceful retching. Whenever they do this, alcoholics, whenever they do forceful retching. Okay, whenever they are doing the forceful retching because of the increase in the intra abdominal pressure, now they are doing the forceful retching. So, during this vomiting, what might happen is the food particles, whatever were there, they are coming out. While they are forcefully coming out, they will cut. They will cause the tears in the lower one third of the esophagus. But the problem here is, not exactly the problem, this is a milder condition when compared to the other one, which we will discuss later. See, these longitudinal tears, whatever were happening, they are incomplete tears. Okay, they are incomplete tears. What does I mean by only mucosa or submucosa? Okay, are involved in the tear. Okay, in the tear process, only mucosa or submucosa is involved, not the entire, not the four layers are involved. Okay, it's just a partial tear, not a complete tear. So tell me, mallory vis syndrome, ah, sorry, not syndrome, mallory vis tears, it is seen in alcoholics during forceful retching. The tears are going to be longitudinal tears, which are incomplete in nature. Only mucosa, submucosa will be involved. When the submucosal vessels, when the submucosal vessels, when, when, if they are involved in this tear, when they are, they are damaged, what will happen? Because of the involvement of the vessels in the submucosa, there will be hematemesis. Okay, there will be hematemesis. There will be bloody vomiting. Vomiting. Okay, in the vomiting, blood will come. Hematemesis can be seen. Now, where exactly these uh, tears are going to be in the lower one third of the esophagus, already I have discussed this with you. Now, associations. I want to add a few more points here. This malarivious tears, they are associated with. See, there is a mnemonic something like A, B, C. A stands for alcoholics. Okay, B stands for bulimia nervosa, bulimia nervosa. So, what exactly is this bulimia nervosa? Bulimia nervosa means the individual, this person, he is doing the forceful retching. Means, for example, it's a psychiatric disorder, bulimia nervosa. In order to control their weight, okay, in order to control their weight, they are doing forceful vomiting after binge eating. They are doing the forceful vomiting to control their weight. It's a psychiatric disorder. So, bulimia nervosa can lead to the malarivious tears and C stands for coughing. Okay. Coughing, forceful, like you know, coughing. And D stands for, not sorry, not D, ABC. And after the ABC, HF. H stands for hiatal hernia. F stands for food poisoning. Okay. Food poisoning, there will be vomitings, right? So, these are the associations. If a patient is having a mellorivious tears, 
then he will be having a longitudinal superficial tear. Yes, blood can be there, like you know, hematemesis can be there because the submucosal blood vessels can be involved. Even these patients can have melena. This blood, it can not only come out, it can pass down and the blood can break down leading to the black colored stools. The blood is coming out in the stools in a black color that's called as a melena. Hematemesis, hematemesis can be there and even melena can be there, no doubt. Longitudinal tears, superficial tears seen in alcoholics and bulimics. Okay, that's a malorivious tears, incomplete tears, remember. So, after the malorivious tears, now let's discuss about next condition which is called as a boyer half syndrome. Okay, what is that? boyer half Bevo. Here, boyer half syndrome. So, what exactly is this boer half syndrome? Here, bore is there, right? Bore is like a hole, right? We will put bores for the water. So, I used to remember. So, what is the problem with the boer half syndrome? Okay, let me write clearly. Boer See, in this boer half syndrome, what is the problem? All the four layers in the esophagus, all the four layers, whatever were there, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, as well as adventitia, all these four layers, they are ruptured. So it's not a partial tear. It's not a it's not just the tear is not just including the mucosa and submucosa. The, all the four layers are now damaged. So how it will be? For example, if this is the esophagus, now there is a hole. Okay, all the four layers are involved. So now what happens? There is abnormal communication. Okay. So this is the problem in boer half syndrome. Let me write the number one point is all four layers of esophagus are ruptured. Okay, all the four layers are, will be ruptured. The mucosa, submucosa, muscularis as well as the adventitia. Serosa is absent in the esophagus, right? Next. What is the most common site for this rupture? See, even this rupture can be seen during forceful vomiting only, okay, in the alcoholics. The most common site is going to be left side, left posterior lateral part. In the left lateral, left posterior lateral part of the lower one third of the esophagus. Lower one third of the esophagus. Now, because of this, what is the problem? Because of this, what, what is the problem is the contents, the gastric contents is going to leak into the mediastinum. So, leading to the mediastinitis. So, there will be mediastinitis, mediastinitis. Okay. And the air, whatever is entering into the esophagus, now this air will have access to it going into the mediastinum. So, there will be pneumo mediastinum. So all this air will try to will try to pass through the muscle layers and all this air will try to come under the skin. So under the skin you can have this air pockets. See air is going into the esophagus. From the esophagus the air is going to leak into the mediastinum. So that is called the pneumomediastinum. All this air it will pass through the layers and it will come down and settle down under the skin causing this crackling sound which is called as a like whenever you try to uh, like you know just palpate here you can find this air spaces that's called as a subcutaneous okay, subcutaneous emphysema so subcutaneous emphysema is going to be seen this is a more dangerous condition so actually in this condition you are not supposed to do any barium swallow but accidentally, if you do barium swallow, please look here. All this barium, now see, it is leaking into the mediastinum. Okay. So, actually it is contraindicated. You are not supposed to do. But if you do, you can have that. Uh, you can see that this barium is now leaking through a hole. Okay. So, now tell me what are the important points about the Boerhaave syndrome. Boerhaave syndrome, all the four layers of the esophagus is going to be ruptured. What is the most common side of the rupture? It is a left postrolateral position in the lower one third of the esophagus. Now, what are the complications? The complications are the pneumomediastinum. Mediastinus, uh, mediastinitis can be seen because of the, the contents are going to leak back into the mediastinum causing the inflammation, mediastinitis. And the patient 
can have subcutaneous emphysema this air pockets are going to come and settle below the skin causing this crackling sound okay whenever you try to palpate it will cause thus like you know crackling sound which is the which is nothing but the subcutaneous emphysema okay so boyer have is complete rupture malory veins is superficial tear it's a superficial tear in malory veins this is a complete rupture okay this is more dangerous condition boyer have is the more dangerous condition when compared to that now after this the next esophageal disorder which i want to discuss here is look here the esophagus endoscopy is showing the esophagus with a lot of like you know ring like structures so this esophagus is having lots of multiple rings so what is this condition it's a allergic esophagitis this type of esophagus is called as let me write here this is called as feline esophagus now why i am showing here the biopsy picture on the top this biopsy picture is because all these blue color dots are the eosinophils so lots and lots of eosinophils are coming into the esophagus and causing the inflammation of the esophagus so this is called as allergic eosinophils are seen during the allergies so this is allergic esophagitis the eosinophils are causing the inflammation we don't know the exact reason why but this feline esophagus yes it's a example of allergic allergic esophagitis okay on histology what you will see on histological examination you will see eosinophils okay eosinophils are going to be seen now this study look here this study whatever i am showing you here this is called as a double contrast esophagogram now this double contrast esophagogram it is going to show which pattern they will ask in your exam so double contrast eso phago gram is going to show you herring bone pattern herring bone pattern okay on endoscopy what you will see endoscopy you can very clearly see that the esophagus is ha having a lot of these rings now esophagus is also looking like a trachea trachea is having a lot of c, uh, c shaped cartilages right now just like that now esophagus is having many many rings so this is looking like almost like a trachea so this is called as a tracheolization okay on endoscopy what you will see is tracheolization of esophagus okay so these are some important points which i want you to know regarding the allergic esophagitis the allergic esophagitis is also called as a feline esophagitis this allergy uh, is because of the eosinophilic infiltration into the esophagus causing the inflammation okay and uh, histopathology will show the eso eosinophils the double contrast esophagogram is going to show the herring bone pattern from radiology this is the very important mcq like you know in this question was asked in many of the central institute exams this is the double contrast esophagogram showing the herring bone pattern and endoscopy is going to show the tracheolization of the esophagus so in this video we have discussed about the malory veins tears seen in the alcoholics superficial tears longitudinal tears which is seen in the lower one third of the esophagus okay alcoholics as well as the bulimia nervosa important at least alcoholics as well as bulimia nervosa patients are going to have malory veins but the more dangerous condition is going to be the boyer halves where the complete four layers of the esophagus is going to be ruptured so that now there is an abnormal connection between the esophagus and the mediastinum so that will cause the mediastinitis as well as the me, uh, pneumo mediastinium because of the air entry into the mediastinal cavity all that air will come down below the skin all that air will try to come down below the skin causing the crackling sounds upon auscultation so this air pockets which are seen below the skin is called as a subcutaneous below the skin subcutaneous emphysema okay so the video is completed Hope the video is helpful. See you with the next topic. Thank you.